When it comes to writing your documents, and let's say to help you write them, you used information from books, websites, magazines, and so on, it's a good idea to give credit where credit is due and let your readers know where you got that information from, the least of which is to avoid plagiarism or copyright laws. So, you can go through your document and flag those quotes or bits of information with what are called citations. And a citation is a short reference to those sources. For example, if I have this paragraph here that I got from a book, I place my cursor at the end of it and in parentheses I type in the author's last name and page number that I got it from. It's pretty simple, but that doesn't give me much information like how many authors have the same last name and what book is it referring to. Basically, with the citation, we're flagging, and if we want to know more about what we flag, at the end of the document, we'll have what's called a bibliography page, which will explain in detail all these different flags or citations that we place throughout our entire document. So, you can look at the author's last name and page number as a citation, and then go to the end of the document, the bibliography page, and cross-reference the author's last name with the page number, and there, We'll have the actual name of the book and any other pertinent information that we want to put into the bibliography page about what we just cited, like this paragraph if we copied it from a book. Now basically you have two choices. You can either type in your citations like open parentheses, author's last name and page number, but that assumes a style, and I'll go over that in a minute, because what you cite for a book, the author's last name and page number, is going to be different from what you cite from a magazine or a web page because web pages typically don't have page numbers. However, Word can help us there. Again, you can do it on your own, type it in, and then buy an English book or search the internet and find out how to cite your works, or you can insert the citation with the help from Word, which is what I recommend for two reasons. One, you don't have to buy an English book, and two, once you insert it, it'll have all the information that will be inserted later on into your bibliography page, which I'll show you how to do that later on. So to go ahead and insert our first citation, well, let's do it right here at the end of this paragraph. Come up here, click on the References tab, go to the Citations and Bibliography group, and it's right there. Click on Insert Citation, the drop-down arrow, and we're going to add a new source. But before we do that, it's going to be tagged to a style. Click on the drop-down arrow, and whew, you got a lot of styles there, like the APA, Chicago. Well, the Chicago is typically used for non-educational documents like magazines and newspapers. And the APA is American Psychological Association for Educational Documents. And let's see, the one other that I know, MLA, Modern Language Association for Literature, Arts, and Humanities. Although these others kind of sound cool, like Ghost. In any case, go ahead and choose the one that works best for you. I'm going to go with the default, APA. And then I can come over here and click on Citation to add a new source opens up the window just fill in all the fields that are pertinent to what you want to keep track of so you can reference it later on if you need to find that work that you're citing within your document here or somebody else wants to learn more about it so up at the top first of all what's our source is it from a book let's say it's from what else we got a report select that and then down below go ahead and type in the author's name now when you click in the field look down below for an example so when you type in the author's last name, it'll be last name comma first. And then if you have an additional author, use the delimiter semicolon to separate them. So if I go ahead and type in uh, Shaggy Do, last name comma first, and I want to add my name as well. Let's go ahead and add the delimiter semicolon and then space Kershaw comma Kurt. Now you can do it that way or you can come over here and click on the edit button and you can type in the last name, first name there. And notice how it already has our names down below, which is cool. And if I'm the primary author, well, I'd select me and promote me and move me up. Oh, isn't that fun? And we can do others. And let's go ahead and add another here. And then click Add. Oh, that's fun. Click Okie dokie. And look, automatically added the delimiter right after Mr. Do here. And then promoted me ahead of Mr. Do. Oh, that's fabulous. Let me go ahead and edit this and just get rid of all of them, but Mr. Do, so delete me and delete doc, click okie dokie. And then if you have any corporate authors, go ahead and check that box and fill it in there. And then the title, we'll say it's Essential Oils for a Healthier Lifestyle. And you can see down below if you need an example again, how to write bibliographies. Oh, that's nice. And then the year, we'll do 2016. 
You can type in the publisher, also the city, and if you want additional fields to get a bit more detailed, you can see down below the checkbox, show all bibliography fields for report, check it, and you get quite a few. Now these red asterisks aren't required, they're just, as you can see down below, recommended. So if you want to type in the publisher, the city, and, well, whatever else is there, I'm going to scroll back up, keep it as is, uncheck it, simplify it, and then down below, here's the citation tag. It's got the author's last name and the year. So when I go ahead and click okie dokie, there's the author's last name and the year. Oh, that's fun. And then when you click inside of it, you get the dynamic box because that way, if there's any changes need to be made to it, you can go ahead and to edit it, you need to click on the drop down arrow and to edit the source. And then make your changes and click okie dokie. And we'll learn about that in more detail in the next training video, but there's a heads up if you can't wait to watch it and you want to edit it because you made a mistake. There you go. Let's go ahead and scroll down and do another one. Like, let's do it for lavender. And click at the end of it. And, well, let me hit the space bar, give it some space, then come back up here to the Citation Bibliography group. And let's click on Insert Citation. And, hey, looky there, Mr. Do is available to be cited again. So we don't have to type in the same source over again. He's already there. Click on it, and he's added. Let's go ahead and hit Undo because I don't want to cite the same source. Let's go ahead and click on Insert Citation and add a new source. And this time, the source is going to be a website. Let's see how that works. Okay, the author, same thing as you can see down below in the example. When you click inside the field, last name, comma, first, and you can see it's already got the first couple letters, my last name for the tag name, and then corporate author if you have any. The name of the web page. Well, it's going to be Lavender, and then the name of the website, well, it's going to be doTERRA, and the year, let's do 2010, the month, and you can see down below examples like, do I abbreviate it like J-A-N? I mean, you don't have to go with what you see down below. Again, it's just an example, but I'll go with the recommendation. Let's say it's February, and then the day, let's say it's the 22nd. And then for the URL, you can go ahead and type it in. But if it's one of those URLs that's super long and it's got a bunch of characters and that whole mess, well, go right to the website. Let's go ahead and open it up. Come up here. There's my website. Let's go to www.mydoterra.com forward slash Dreamforce. Then hit enter. This is going to be a great example. And then over to the right. Oh, there's my name. That's my fancy store. Let's go over to the right, click on the Reveal button to Shop. And then what language, what country, well, leave it as is, click Start Shopping. And we want essential oils to look at. We want single oils, not blends, so single. I know I'm flying through this. And then we'll scroll down to find our lavender. Right there, okay, great, click on it. So I can go right to the web page, come up here, it selects the entire URL, Control c to copy, and then we can go ahead and close out of all tabs. Come back in here and Control v as in Victor to paste it, and whew, look at that. It's quite the lengthy URL, but a lot easier than me trying to memorize that or type it in. And then you've got, well, the additional bibliography fields, like the year accessed. And that's a good point because when it comes to websites, things change. Websites can be taken down in a blink of an eye or pages being moved about. So if I access this in 2012 and people in 2013 or 2014 going, hey, are you feeding me full of bologna? Because there's no such thing as a website that has lavender with doTERRA. And you can tell them, well, I accessed it last back in 2012. That's when it was there. Maybe it's a new page, so you'd have to go ahead and search it and then update your citation here, of course, or if you like. In any case, let's go ahead and uncheck that, go back to something simplistic, and click okie dokie. Oh, there we go. Bump me down to the next line. Kershaw, 2010. Gave me the full name for the tag and not the first couple of letters, K-E-R. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.